All right, let, let me know if y'all can hear me and everything. I tried to I tried to do this on my um on my laptop, but for some reason I can't do this. So I'll say I guess I just do it through the phone. You get my point across, right? I just wanted to howl at everybody. Yeah, what's going on back there? To let some people get in and, and everything, and then we we will go with it. We will go with it. Let's talk about this interesting conversation I heard. The other day on CNN International. See, it's a difference between CNN and CNN International. Yes, they both do propaganda, but on the international side, um, good morning. On the international side, they have some different conversations. But see, in America, we're shielded in a lot of conversations. How people really think about you know the, uh, America as a country. Um, it's amazing how they do that. I mean, they, they really insulate you to think everything about that country is the best thing ever. Nothing else is better than that. You ain't got no issues, no problems, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I'll get to that. And the, re, and the reason why I put the title up is because that's basically what it was talking about. And the second part of that title is one of the main things. But see, America itself, Black Americans, what I'm learning more and more, we've held that country up. And the only reason that that country has lasted as long as it lasted is because of us. I'm really starting to see it now. Um, and the reason why it's tumbling out of control is because of not what we're doing, but our saying, okay, do your thing. Have it. Because, see, the people that's running the country and that, the country, that have been running the country, you got to go back to the history. In Europe, the main thing about them is they would fight a lot prior to coming along in enslaving us, right? They would fight a lot. And they never could get along. You know, we always talk about quote-unquote black-on-black crime. They have more white-on-white -white crime. They've been doing that forever, Okay. If you, leave, if you take us out of the mix, they always want to fight each other. It's just a, a bottom line. They don't like each other like that. The only thing in history they have been you know, like unified on is the hatred of black people. That's the, just about the only thing they kind of unified about. Or oppression, you know, uh, white supremacy. They're unified in that. But you, once you remove that out the picture, okay, once you remove that out, what do you have? They go back to what they normally do was fight each other, right? So, let, let me get to the point. So I won't take too long with this. I know y'all busy, got things to do. Um, morning time, at least, um, in the country. So I was watching the CNN International, and it was talking about what happened to America. They said America like, can't lead anymore. They said, and so the number one thing they started on was George Floyd. It started on that. The reason why they hit on George Floyd first is because America's had a mantra going all over the world talking about human rights and oh did we, we gotta you know protect human rights and we need to sanction these people because of human rights and everything and human rights, human rights, human rights. Oh, this leader did this to their people, so we're gonna invade them. You know, everything about human rights, right? But when George Floyd happened. And the world saw what happened to George Floyd in real time, 4K, right? The world started looking at America at that point saying, well, what the hell going on in America? Why y'all did that to that man like that? You understand? And sure, Derek Chauvin went to jail. But look what it took for Derek Chauvin to go to jail. Even that uprising made America look bad before the world stage. Like it, it really embarrassed them, what happened with George Floyd and even the reaction to it. And I understand the reaction to what happened to George Floyd because even our brother Martin Luther King has said that, you know, rioting is just the language of the unheard. You understand? People who are not getting justice because they have no faith in, the, in that system because that system is, is not built or have been meant for any kind of justice. Understand? 
So for hundreds and hundreds of years, America shielded the world from their horrible human rights record. Everything that happened to our people is human rights violations. I need the UN, Geneva Convention, whatever. Do you know why America is not part of the International Criminal Court? If, if America and a lot of these European nations are part of the International Criminal Court, when they don't give you justice here in America, you can go to the ICC and you can start bringing cases against these race soldiers in the ICC. They make sure that they're not part of that because they don't want nobody to hold them accountable for anything that they do. See, they, they over-police you know, our people. They want to put sanctions on Mali. They want to put sanctions on, like I said, Ethiopia, Eritrea, all these different people they want to put sanctions on. But look at what they do to black people. Now, if any other leader was doing what they do to black people, they've been talking about home human rights violations and sanctioning these, these other leaders in other nations. You understand what I'm saying? But they can sit up here and, and do what they do to us. And it's, it's, it's statistically proven, factually proven about the racism, about the white supremacy. Every faction in America affects black American people. So they was talking about all of that, right? And say, how can America lead on human rights when you look into their country and how they treat black Americans? See, you think that people not watching. Everybody got the internet now. See, what I like now about news is decentralized. And what I mean by decentralized is that no one person controls it. Now, of course, they're trying to get in control of the social media companies so they can disseminate what people see and what they don't see, right? They're really trying to do that. They don't want the truth out there, especially the truth that's going to make them look bad because they have an image problem right now on the world stage. Now, some people, they, they start mentioning Trump, but then they start saying Trump was only a response to the issues in America. So they, they didn't really look at Trump as the problem, but then they, they went to Biden, right, after that. And they said Biden, supposedly supposed to be different than Trump, and really, he can't fix the problems either. So you're looking like the, the continuation of the problems has been go ongoing. Now, what they did say, just being honest, they did say America doesn't seem like America since Barack Obama left office. Now, we know Barack Obama ain't been perfect. We know that. And does some things that, that we don't like. But they said that America was probably the best during Barack Obama's presidency. This is what the world people are saying, right? The world people. Not me, okay? Then they brought up our politics. They say that the politics in America is not working, and they're talking about how a lot of people, about like sociologists, things like that, say it's too tense in America, that, you know, you hear these folks threatening, you know, I'm not trying to say it across the internet, but you hear what they be threatening, right? And I'm not talking about against us, I'm talking about within the country itself. Um... They say it's because it's so volatile right now. They say the politics in America don't work because, and it's been like that. You have one faction of people want what they want. Another, we're talking about the Democrats. Another faction of people, the Republicans, what they want. And then you got the citizens themselves. And the citizens don't get what they want out of the whole situation. So it's literally breaking down social order slowly but surely because the people aren't being listened to and the people aren't getting what they want. These politicians are rogue, all of them. They don't do nothing for the people. They do it all for what they choose to do and their corporate buddies and whoever else is putting money in their back pocket. You understand? That issue with the politics in America, just that transcends you know, any color. That's all over the place. There ain't not one group that's happy with politicians in America. Can't name a one. Okay? Another thing they brought up, and say why America can't lead anymore is that if a president makes a promise, a previous president makes a promise, the next president can come in and just do what he wants to do and rip it up, like what Trump did. Or Biden comes in and changes something, right? Like, like with Trump, he did the, the stay in Mexico policy. When Biden comes in, I'm, I ain't doing it no more, right? But he went through all the negotiation with Mexico to get that done, and you rip it up. Leaders looking at this instability. 
throughout the world. Because if, if Biden says something, well, who's to say whoever comes after Biden don't just say, I'm not doing that no more. That means America don't keep its word. Because every four years, you could change your word. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's delegitimizing America a lot. And they kept saying over and over and over, because of these issues, we can't look to America to lead no more. But let me get to you what, let me get to another point they mentioned. And what really was the straw that broke the camel's back for why a lot of countries aren't looking to America anymore to lead the virus. They was talking about how the virus showed America cannot lead anymore. This is the words they mentioned. They said the virus. They said that they could not get a hold of the virus. They could not, they didn't know how to mitigate it. They didn't know what to do with the healthcare aspect. The world had looked at America like, okay, y'all supposed to have the leading healthcare in the world. And the, they couldn't even look at America. Uh, you look at all the leadership, whether it's the, the, the presidential side, you look at the Fauci, you look at whoever else you want to look at, Everybody had a conflicting message. Nobody stayed on task. Nobody wanted to be truthful about the situation, right? With that, and the world looked at the amount of deaths that happened in America with the virus, okay? And that alone showed that America has failed, failed with the virus. Now, our system is the reason why America has failed with the virus, okay? Our system in many, many ways is, number one, the reason why we fail with the virus is because in our country it's profit, profitability over human life. Meaning, we can make all kinds of profits putting whatever we want in, in your food. And it's been proven these additives, these chemicals, too much sugar, too much salt, uh, food dyes, etc., has been making people all over the country sick, no matter who you are, Right? These people, what they do is put all this mess in the food, get people sick. Then these same people have the pharmaceutical companies giving you a, a, a pill, injection, or whatever they're going to give you to help, medic, you know, help with the symptoms because it doesn't cure you. I can understand that they give you something that cures you, but no. They, so that, that cycle alone, it's an insidious cycle with the food industry and the pharmaceutical companies. It's insidious how they both wash each other's hands, right? How they put certain things in the food to make you uh, more, the desire more food. Or they putting, you know, things they shouldn't put in food at all, right? All the advertisements, all the, you know, different things they, they do to people constantly to get people on food addiction. And food addiction is worse than drug addiction. Do you, do you know the studies have shown people who are addicted to sugar is worse off than people who are addicted to cocaine? Do you know that? That's all done by design. Even the high fructose corn syrup that made the obesity in the United States go up over 400% when versus back in the day they used cane sugar. When they used cane sugar, you didn't have the obesity problem. Because cane sugar is natural. It's what God you know, created a lot of our ancestors, right? Or on sugar cane plantations, including my ancestors on both sides of my family, or on sugar cane plantations in Louisiana, okay? I remember growing up, you know, getting pieces of sugar cane and just chewing sugar cane and sugar cane was good. It was real good. Anyway, so they say that America failed with the virus. Then then you look at like African countries. African countries, even Caribbean countries, did better with the virus than America. Supposedly superpower America. They could not defeat a virus, but African countries and Caribbean countries had low amount of deaths with no access with no access to jabs. America created three jabs and they still could not defeat the virus. Then another thing they was bringing up as well, and I said this before, that that is, that is a problem in America, but when, I, when you start hearing other people talk about it, it's this thing, and I said before, the worst thing America has ever done in their in constitution it has a thing called states' rights. The states' rights crap, no other country operate like that. Whether, whether, whether you have a, a state government that can do whatever it wants and tell the federal government what it's not going to do. 
you cannot get a boat on board with something like the virus and not have one brand of leadership, right? Whether you like what, what, what the governor of Texas have done, the governor of Florida, or whatever governor, you still need one standard. In America, you don't have that standard. Why you don't have that standard? Because after the Civil War, the states' rights things really came into play because in the South, they were saying that, look, you know, we want to have states' rights to do whatever we want to do. And if you're not willing to do states' rights, we're about to start another Civil War over that. Because you got to think about it. After slavery, in the 10 years of Reconstruction, where you had black Americans thriving, after the Civil War and during Reconstruction, they had protection of the Union soldiers. This around the time that black Americans were Republicans at that time period. Well, the reason this is what got black Americans away from the Republican Party was the Great Compromise. And that was the compromise, was to pull the Union troops from the South, let them start having states' rights and doing what they want to do, right? And then that's when the problems, you know, start getting back bad for black Americans. But 10 years after the Civil War, Everything was good. We were extremely thriving after slavery in the United States of America. So this, this state's rights is a racist relic that want to, you know, I don't have to do what you say, you being the president, I can do what I want to do. You understand? Well, that's not how you run a country. I do what I want to do. No, if we're going to run a country, we need to have one government, one military, one set of laws. Not, well, this state... This is illegal, but that state is not. Like, for instance, you go to California, marijuana is legal, right? But then you go to places like Texas, it's not legal. Well, how you got one country, it's like you got 50 different countries. At least in the African continent, they don't say it's one country, but all these different states. They say, no, we all different countries. America kind of act like a, a different, you know, 50 different countries. You may have one central currency, but 50 different countries. Because these governors can do whatever they want to do. And some people think that's a good thing. Oh, that's a good thing. You know, you wouldn't want the federal government, you know, just having all the power and, and, and saying one thing and that's it. No, it's, it's screwing up things like the virus. One people say, well, we need to put on a mask. Somewhere else say, no, we ain't got to do that. When you go to other foreign countries, it's one rule. It ain't all that 50 million different rules. It's one. And you know what? That's understandable. I agree. Yeah, 50 independent corporations. There you go. That's exactly what it's like. you independent. You do what you want to do. But yet, yet, you looked at the states, look at the government, say, hey, provide me funding. Provide me this. Provide me that. That was the messed up thing they done now. Of course, man, their mindset came from being underneath the monarchy in Britain. So that when they came here and set this up, they said, well, we don't want a central figure to be controlling everything. Well, that's y'all problem. But y'all problem, which y'all thought to fix it, is actually messing things up. And if you're hearing, America is not a de democracy. And they will, anybody who's smart will tell you America is not a true democracy. Because democracy means the people control it and the people run it. They call it a constitutional republic. It is not a democracy. And when you have a republic... That means you have oligarchs that run everything. The people don't run crap. Now, why that's important for us, right? Because black Americans are seeing that America isn't working out for us, and even the most hardcore bootlegs that's out there, and some of the most hardcore of the hardcore, are starting to wake up too and say, wait a minute, hold on. And it's something that they, they think how they waking up now is this voting rights thing. This is how they starting to wake up. And it's interesting to watch them start to wake up. It's interesting because they say, wait a minute. They're now saying, y'all ain't done nothing for us as black people. We're talking about the most hardcore Democrat shield black folk. We're talking about your NAACP, your National Urban League black folk, your National Action Network black folk, even your boule. Your boule is starting to say, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, wait a minute. I don't think that those 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 young brothers and sisters that's out here, you know, putting you know in the grassroots, I don't think they're wrong now. I'm starting to believe that they're not doing, you know, the Democrats aren't doing nothing for us. 
Now, I watched a, uh, a conference, you know, a few questions from Jim Crow Joe. And one reporter said, see, it's so bad that even the mainstream reporters now are coming to Biden directly and saying, hey, you've done something for everybody else. Black voters are feeling like you're not doing nothing for them. What's going on? And, of course, Biden was just saying that, you know, well, things came up and, you know, yada, yada, yada. I have time to get out there to speak to them. I guess do his little Jedi mind trick to, to some black folks. But that's not going to work. Black Americans want something tangible. And voting rights isn't even tangible either. Now, he talked about, well, I voted. I, I got Strom Thurmond, which is a KKK member, literally. I got him to vote for voting rights the last time. Because, and no reporter won't say this, why is it that black American voting rights is on the lease for 25 years? Why black Americans don't have permanent civil rights? And why black Americans don't have permanent voting rights like white people do? You understand? Now, this voting rights thing, as a lot of people are saying, is not about me or you. It's about, look at New York, how New York just sat there and voted to allow, to allow non-citizens to vote. What country in the world allowed non-citizens to vote? None. But see, they, see, what happens is the Democrat Party played itself. It played itself. It said, I'm going to give something to the Asian community. I'm going to give something to, to, to everybody else. I'm going to give it to. And it, then that's going to, that's going to, in hopes, get them faithful to us in voting when we don't need black Americans. But once again, it blows back up in their face. So the world is, has seen that. So the world is saying, it was an interesting statement when they said, we can't look to America, but we in a position in the world where we can't do a lot without it. Because that's how America kind of intertwined itself globally. All our tax dollars going to foreign countries all over the world. You, you're talking about it, they don't have money. They got money. If they for one year say we're not giving a dime to no other foreign country, it'll be so much money in America, they can give money to everybody, right? They can support people if they want to, but they, they don't do that. And their military is entwined in everywhere too. So even places like the EU, the EU countries, they are worse off than even America is. I was um, talking with this lady from the UK think yesterday and this lady was you know had the same concept about the UK she couldn't stand it she, she said how it's falling apart everything we say about America and this was this was a lady from the UK that wasn't uh she was a white woman saying this yesterday about the UK she said it's not working out for them either and she said that she's actually better off in other countries than in the UK, so the same, so the same problems we got in the US, they got in the UK. Nobody's happy. The politicians do whatever the hell they want to do. They don't listen to you at all. They don't. And this is why things are going down. But see, see, black. I believe now what I see, Black Americans have been the glue that's kept that country together all these years. And when we say, have at it, do you, we gonna fix, either fix ourselves or we just checking on out and, and, and taking our talents where we wanna take our talents to. We will see that, that and look, you know what? I think that's best. I think that's best for black Americans to say do it. Cause you know, you got some people with this nostalgia about it and all of that, but I'm like this, like Fannie Lou Hamer say, well, if we, if we can't have it and we can't run it, you can't have it and run it either. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a firm believer of what Fannie Lou, Lou Hamer said that. They don't want us in a minute. They don't want us running nothing. They don't want us having anything. Okay, well, you can't have it either. And since we just let you have it, look how it's spiraling out of control. And black folks completely diverse, diverse, <laughs> diverse, that's funny, divorce itself. From involving yourself in anything of their business. Well, I mean, what what are you doing? What are you doing at this point? Let them let them make a mess of what they want to make a mess of. That's how I look at it. Stop assisting them. 
Oh yeah, they know they know black folks. They know listen, like I said, they mess they messing off the, 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 the hardcore shields. When you piss the shields off, you know good and well you, you messed up when you piss them off. Yeah, because like I said, we've been in America for hundreds and hundreds of years. Black Americans have every right to run that country at this point. We built it. We have every right to have some sort of control and say so in America. We innovated that place. But since since they want to be rebellious, since they want to be against God's children, since they, since they want to partner with the devil like they always have. See, the old people not here no more to, to tell us just, just, to, just to be quiet and pray, and that's it. That was that was a, I believe the old people. I know we talk about them, but I believe the old people's time was a time of grace for the white supremacists. Even by God, it was a time of grace to let them repent of their sins, let them turn themselves around and do what's right. And they didn't do that. Now you have the new generation of people, like people like me, who say, "Do you? I don't care." At this point. They also talked about on that program about a lot of people in America is thinking about themselves now and not about the country. You straight. I'm glad black America is now thinking about itself. Finally, finally. Stop being a mule carrying the water for everybody. It's time for black Americans to do that. Black Americans have every right to say, I can kill that by anybody else but ourselves. Every group that came in that country and walked on our back. We, had to, we carried every group on our back, all of them. It's our turn to say, no, let somebody else carry the, carry the load for a change. Let somebody else do it. We ain't slaves no more. That's what slaves do. Slaves carry people on their back for free and get nothing out of the deal. And we're going to carry somebody on our back, we need to be cashed out. We need a direct deposit. We need a Venmo or PayPal or Cash App. We need whatever currency we need. We, we got to get that at this point. We need that. Black people got to stop being afraid to get cashed out on the individual level and the collective level. You do nothing for free for these people. It ain't, ain't no morality. And forget that. You ain't moral. So don't come to me about morality. You, you, you black people, y'all show them good people. Y'all, y'all, y'all hold things together. We are good people, and we do hold things together. We're just not holding together for you no more. You're not going to play a Jedi mind trick for us to save America. We're not saving it now. Because we wanted to save America. We, we wanted to keep the country together. You you said F us, and you made sure to, to, to let all these other groups that come into this country, okay, to, to, to get a bag, to get laws, whatever. So what we're saying to you is, we're going to think about us and us only. We're not thinking about nobody else. Just like these other groups, they think about themselves. And you know what's happening is unraveling. Because you can't run nothing. You never ran nothing on your own. Every time you're by yourself, you fight and ruin your own things. Even Europe itself. The reason why Europe looked the way it looked is because of slavery too. You go back to the, to the 1500s, 1400s, 1300s. 12, whatever, how y'all lived, and especially the medieval times, Lord Jesus, all the plagues y'all had. Every time you're by yourself, you, you, you get messed off. You're right, they gaslight us. No, don't let them gaslight you. Mm -mm. You tell them people, oh, what a, oh, you know, this is what they keep saying, democracy, oh my God, democracy is it's, it's on a ballot. They ain't on my ballot. What are you talking about? Yeah, we got to save America. Go save it then. But we need you. I know you don't need me at all. No, you don't. I'm trying to save my community. I don't care about you. Show, show me when America has come save my community. Show, show me when America has made black people's priorities, you know, a lifeline. Every election. Oh, my God. This is an important election. No, it's not. What's important is from what I need for my community. That's what's important. I don't care about you. Well, you got to go out there and vote for the Democrat. I ain't got to do nothing but eat, sleep, and when the dog get ready for me, to die. It's the only thing I need to do. Anything more than that, it's a choice. 
And I'm choosing to say half edit. That's what I'm saying. Our priority is ourselves. That's our priority. But brother, you don't know, you gotta get involved with the politics, brother. You gotta get involved because you, you gotta have a seat at the table, brother. It's been plenty of black politicians that had a seat at the table. And where has it gotten black people? Nowhere. It's gotten black people nowhere. And you have plenty of seats at the table. You've been in the rooms when decisions have been made. And you're not even helping make those decisions at all. So all this seat at the table crap, you've been having a seat at the table. You've been in the room. And where has they gotten you? Where has they gotten us as a collective of people? Congressional Black Caucus. Look at them. That was the old, that's the seat at the table. That seat gives things to five dollar Indians. Plyburn. That that seat voted for that uh, 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 Asian hate crime bill. But then you have them in China calling us the N word, telling us get out of China. Right. So no. We are good. We need to think about ourselves for a change. Freedom means thinking about yourself. You're not free when you're a slave. You're not free. You're not free. You're free when you think about yourself, your community, and what you need. Well, it, it, democracy, I don't care about your democracy. All I care is about us. Is black people on the ballot? Is, 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 is reparations on the ballot? Is a... Uh, uh, Qualified immunity on that ballot. If it's not on there, and I'm gonna get it, then I don't, I don't, I don't know. It has nothing to do with me. That's not my problem. Y'all gotta stop being hustled and conned by these people that try to fear monger you. Let me tell you something. These people do a great job at fear mongering you, make you scared. Oh, because because fear garners an emotional response. So you know that's not even of the law to walk and, and live in fear. That's of Satan. Satan wants you to live in fear. God wants you to be courageous and, and go right into the face of fear. And any, anybody who, who knows the Hebrew Israelites, I know they're in there. I've seen a few of y'all. You know, you know, you know the Lord say to not run for, from, from anything like that, to, to face it head on, right? And, and that same Bible also talks about getting away from those that's, that's laid up for the judgment. That same scripture talk about that too. Because what I what I don't like about some of our people, you I don't know where did this, and, and I really believe it now as I'm thinking about it. I think about where's this resurgence of this pride for America and black people. I'm like, really, where did that come from? And why? I think they really think about that. And is that really going to benefit black America? This, 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 this fighting about America so much. Like I see some people do now. Because what I'm seeing is, it's getting progressively worse. And it's making, to me, it's making us as a collective look bad. Because you got all this pride and you don't get nothing out of the deal. You get nothing. Asians didn't do crap. And they don't have no big... Waving the American flag pride, and look what they get out the deal. Illegal immigrants were sub south of the border, was about to get broke off with a four hundred fifty thousand dollar check, and they not talking about they built America and they, they waving this American flag and they getting a bag. That is betrayal to Black America. So I'm trying to understand where all that come from. I'm just saying. Why that assert, reassurgent, where that come from? Because black America has never been so hardcore like that. Trust me, listen. If they treated us right, I'll be the, I'll be the biggest one uh, waving the flag. But they don't treat us right. They treat us like freaking fifth-class citizens. We're treated lower than even illegal immigrants in this country, in America. We're treated lower than that. 
And it's just not Biden. It's, it's the whole system. He's not the only one. You, you look at it. Even if, even if you get high up, they, they can, listen, high up white folks are hardly mess with. People like Marilyn Mosby that get, got federal charges for taking out her own money out of her retirement and trying to buy property with it. She got, she got indicted with federal charges. You understand what I'm saying? That don't happen to white prosecutors. White, white prosecutors have sent brothers to jail for 30 and 40 years of crimes they didn't commit. They don't get prosecuted for that. They don't get prosecuted for it. But Marilyn Mosby gets a federal indictment for taking out her own money. Her money. Her money. Her money. Name me the white politicians or DAs they do that to. Even the O.J. Simpson situation. They locked him up for taking his own stuff. That, 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 that's, that's what I'm saying. And, and, and Sister uh, Demetria, shout out to her. She sent me this link about this new documentary about to come on Showtime about, about Bill Cosby. Yeah, not going to stop on that man. That man can't see. You know, that man's an elderly man. And they, they want this brother to die in jail. If you know they're after you like that, this is what I say. <laughs> if you know they're after you like that, why don't you just say, hey, look, I'm taking my money, taking everything, I'm out. I'd rather go than you put me in a freaking cage to die. Bill Cosby got the resources to go do that. They're not going to leave that brother alone. They, they don't care about his age. They don't care about his condi the condition. These people are hell-bent on trying to make sure, you know, that brother, you know, die in jail. They're hell-bent on it. That's what I'm saying. It's, it, it, it's, I would have I been like, forget it, I'm out. I'm out. I, I, whatever. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm good. I'm out. Y'all can talk all you want. I'm not thinking about you. I'm going to be just chilling somewhere. Whether she's close, I don't know if she's close to or not. And, and what does she do? Russ, did do a Russell Simmons and leave and don't come back? That's what Russell Simmons did. Russell Simmons saw he was next. He saw them circling the wagons, and Russell said, "Um, nah, I see what y'all trying to do. So, so let me, so, so let me, uh, let, let me go ahead on and, 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 and get my sell my stuff I need to sell, and." <laughs> Chuck the Deuce, you know what I'm saying? And Russell, you know what? It was hot. It was hot when Russell did that. Y'all remember that? Oh, why did he leave the country? I mean, he act like he's guilty or something. He wasn't charged anything, so he has every right to leave. You just mad you couldn't get him. And he went to a country that didn't have an extradition treaty. He went to Indonesia. Bali, to be exact, in the city. Understand what I'm saying? Now shout out to the people that became members, and shout out to the person who gave a super chat. I'm just, I'm just really just, this, you know, when I'm in them zones, I'm, I'm not trying to, um, you know, you look at Prince, look at Michael Jackson, and Prince and Michael Jackson would have left, if both of them brothers would have left America. I believe them brothers would be still alive today, both of those brothers. It's a certain, it's a certain thing when they after you, when they're really after you. There's been many of our brothers and sisters that left this country when they, when they just knew they were after them. And it, look, sometimes, even the Bible time, people had to leave. Stephen, thank you for the uh, super sticker. Okay? Some people had to leave. Didn't Jesus himself had to leave and get away from Herod? So, so nothing would happen to him? He had to go to Egypt? If the Lord had to leave he, as, a, as a baby so he wouldn't get killed, well, shoot, you don't think you may have to leave sometime? So you can still be here? And some people say, well, that's running. That ain't running. Because as long as you got an internet connection, you can keep speaking to your people. And in, in America, it ain't not the only country with the freaking internet. Well, you say people talk about leaving, but they need to plan on the other side. The key is, the first key is to start traveling. And let me tell you something. 
There are more and more black people. Y'all not in these travel groups like I am. There are so many black people, so many that have left or in the process of leaving. Now, y'all say, because we're talking about the, the, the flag waving folks, well, why are y'all talking about leaving when people coming over? People in these countries, and I've been there, I know, they are propagandized. They think America is what they see on television. They have no clue. But then when they get over here long enough in America, and then they really are shown what America really is, they get a, uh, they get an eye opener. Do you know America is very unfair to even people throughout the world? In the UK too. Let's say if you want to go visit America, you can't just go pay for a visa and come visit America. No, they got to approve you. They want to see your bank account information. They want to see all this information for you to go. And they can deny you. Now, Americans don't even know how that feels. You can go to almost any country in the world, pay for a visa, and be let in. Nobody treats, treats you like, like, like the way America and the UK treats visitors from other countries. You're talking about the, the quote-unquote immigrants in, in the uh, uh, America? When I tell y'all, these are the people they're selecting. I'm not lying. They're selecting those people that's coming over here. And I believe they're doing that. So we would never connect with the brothers and sisters on the continent because we thinking that the immigrants they're allowing over in America is all, that that's who they are on the continent. So shoot, what in the hell I want to go over there for? Y'all don't get that. They are selecting the coons. They're allowing the, the raccoon families here. I'm not saying all, because a few good ones slip through the cracks, but they allow them here. When you go to those countries, you start meeting the riders, the brothers and sisters that, that fight, they want to fight for the community. They don't want, they would not allow them in America. Not with their process. They, they're going to check their paperwork. They're going to say, oh, shoot, uh-uh, really? Oh, he talking about, rev oh, no, he no, we can't have that revolutionary speaking. We can't have no pan-Africanism. We can't have that here. We got to have black folks that talking about a kata over here. You know what I'm saying? But we got to keep black Americans. See, y'all understand. They want to hold you and hold us like Pharaoh held the children of Israel. Pharaoh did not want to let go the children of Israel. The Pharaoh that you're dealing with today in, 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 in Babylon don't want to let you go either. Because I thought that was quite strange. Just, just think about this. Prior to the virus showing up, they were talking about black Americans alone spent a billion dollars in travel. You're talking about black Americans. They don't even talk about we're going to separate the year of return. Right? With Ghana. That really got on their radar. With that Ghana situation. And I started seeing it being covered in the LA Times, the New York Times, the New York Post, Washington Post, all these major public. I said, why do they care about the year of return for why are they, because see, you have to understand, when they're all making certain certain kind of stories about us, you better believe they're getting white America on alert. Y'all have to understand that. Their media is to disseminate news to keep white America on the alert. And I mean, when I mean white America, I mean the government, I mean all of it. The average white person don't care about that. We're talking about the government say, hey, wait a minute. Don't y'all know the Negroes are going to Ghana? And a lot of them have moved over there? And a lot of them established businesses. A lot of them are happier. They don't want to come back. It's not perfect at all. But they're going. Oh, they're going to this country. They're going to that country. Oh, they're down there in Colombia. Oh, they're down in Mexico. Oh, and some of them are, 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 are over here in, in Nigeria. Some of them have moved to this country, that country. They, and, they're, and when they go, they're literally telling people the truth about this place. So it was amazing that when the virus came along, the first thing they did is, is shut off travel. Nobody couldn't travel no more. Now we go back hindsight, that wouldn't have stopped anything anyway. If we go back in hindsight, you say East Africa is picking up, oh man, yeah, oh, East Africa, yeah. Well, let's call it what it is. East Africa is the one that welcomed me in. It was East Africa, it wasn't West Africa, it was East Africa. There's a lot of black Americans going, wherever black Americans want to 
try. My, my issue, and the reason why we're even doing these tours, I believe that is a way to facilitate a, a person just to go see it for themselves. I believe that if you can go see wherever you want to go for yourself just one time, I ain't tell you to move. I'm not telling you to do nothing. Just go one time. I believe it will open your eyes enough to, to, to number one, get a travel bug in you because you need that, a travel bug. Number two, it, get, it lets you see other people are living just fine and not having your issues and problems. Okay? Number three, you are a person. You are a human being. You're not, you're not just black, 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 and black, 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 black. Yes, I know. That's our culture. That's how. But it becomes, in America, it can be a, it can be a weight on you, too. You need to know you're just me. I'm Philip. You just need to. I just need to know I'm Philip today. I don't need to be told every freaking day I'm black. I, I, obviously, I look in the mirror. I can see that. I don't deny it, right? I don't deny it. But can I just live? Can I live? Black folks don't even know how how it feels to be stress free. A lot of. Them. This is why black folks have so many vices. Like black folks that smoke all that weed, that's not normal. The way you smoke weed in America. Well, the reason why you're smoking all that because a lot of times you're under stress. America keeps the stress on you just to live. Then you add the racism aspect. That makes it even worse. The UK as well. But the UK got the same issues in America. The same issues. When you see black folks drinking like that. That's, that's because, of, because of the stress. And some people cope with alcohol. Some people cope with weed. Some people cope with promiscuity. Some people cope with anger, believe it or not. Hatred. Because America is a very angry country. It's angry. There's a bunch of anger there. Everybody angry. It's not just one group of people. Everybody is angry. Look at the road rage. People killing folks on the road for, for, for cutting somebody off. That's not normal to pull out a firearm and kill up a person because they cut you off. It's a bunch of just, it's just an anger. It's a wicked spirit over that country. It's wicked. No, somebody say Africa is not perfect. No, Africa is not perfect. Nobody, no, no place on earth can be perfect. You're not going to find heaven on earth nowhere. But what I'm saying is, at least for as black people, I can deal with other problems. I just like having a problem or not having a problem. I like to just get away from the racism aspect of it. I know other countries got problems. Oh, I know they do. And every country's not America. I get it. But, man, you know, you're talking about the weed. Yeah, some people smoke weed sometimes as a coping mechanism. Some of them. Because think about it. I ain't seen black folks smoke weed so much unless they're in America. You go talk to black folks in other places, they don't be smoking that weed like that. In the African continent, they're not blowing like that. I'm not saying they ain't got people that smoke, but they ain't doing it like they're doing it in America. They just not. But they don't live under the conditions that we live under either. Everybody's weaponized against us. That's not normal. You gotta think about that. Every group coming to this country, they're told to be against us. So you're not only dealing with the white supremacists, you're dealing with all his, his, his lackeys, too, that's coming in there. And that's a stress on you constantly. Everybody don't like you. Everybody want to copy you. Everybody want to copy you. But nobody likes you. So what we got to pay attention to is not to be consumed with anger so much. I know it's hard, but we got to learn how to, to, to remove the anger that we have for, you know, just in general. We have to learn to remove the hatred we have, definitely within our own communities, right? Because the hatred we have, listen, shooting and killing another black man, that comes from hatred. That's not normal to be brothers killing other brothers like that. And look at the reason why brothers are getting killed. He stepped on my shoes. He looked at me the wrong way. He disrespected me. And my respect is everything. But the white police will step on your shoe. 
the white police will disrespect you, and I promise you, your respect won't be everything against that white police or that white judge or that white DA. But when it comes to a black man, you're ready to take his life because you don't you don't have hate for the white man. You have hate for your own. And the reason why I know you got hate because you have no problem putting another black man in a body bag. That's not normal, folks. That's not who we are as a people. That's not even how we get down globally as a people. It's not. They keep that drug in the black community. Why? Because they can keep you drugged up. They can keep you high. They can keep you in a position where they can do anything they want to do to you. It's not normal to rob your mama, rob your daddy, rob your brother, your sister. That's not normal. Y'all so confused now. Y'all y'all be in one game, and, and, and you, they say you, 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 you be in a crip. You have another crip killing a crip. You can't. You don't have no cohesion in your own game. That's how much you hate each other. What kind of crap is that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They put it. They put in the drugs in the black communities constantly. Like recently, I heard about the Takashi Six Nine case, where they had when they wrapped when they got everybody, in, in uh, that was associated. I think those that, that was it Nine Train Bloods or whatever they got a hold to. You know, Takashi Six Nine y'all snitching. But well, do y'all know part of that case? They had this white woman that was a police that was doing all that was helping to connect and do all the trapping and put all the heroin and and all the drugs in the black community. It was a white female cop that was connecting all that mess. And do y'all know that white female cop only got 15 months? And she was the one, and she was a cop at that, doing all the trapping. You know why she got 15 months? Because she had three kids and a mom. And you know, it's, it'd be hard for a mother to be in jail. But all the black men would get 15, 30 years in federal jail. They put all these drugs in our community because black people don't have no boats, don't have no planes. A lot of black folks don't even have passports to even even travel, a lot of them. So how how do how drugs get in the black community? They put in that mess there. Why? They have shown that if you can keep a community drugged up, you can keep them conquered. If black folks would understand that strategy of just leave the drug alone because somebody cannot force you to put a drug in your mouth or smoke nothing or inject nothing. That's why the Bible teaches be ye sober and vigilant because your adversary roams around like a lion seeking whom he may devour. But it did say be sober. That's why I don't believe in being drunk. Now, do I like wine? Oh yeah, I like wine. Wine is pretty good. Social drinking at your home, a place where you're not going to be in the streets. Because you need to, I don't believe in really drinking in public. Wine is nothing wrong with wine. Wine is good. They have studies about, it's good, you know, certain wines are good for the heart and all of that. And we're not talking about getting, drinking a whole bottle of wine and getting drunk either. We're talking about that. We're talking about just having a glass of wine. Certain wines are great for certain meals. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, the CIA and all of them drop drugs in all these black communities. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, you don't hear them dropping a bunch of drugs. Now, what's happening to them? See, this is the funny part. Everything they do to us. I call my phone. Anyway, it comes right back. Okay? Because now they, they have said the Chinese have been sending all this fentanyl in the, United, in the United States through the mail. And this fentanyl is tan of the white community. They have so much fentanyl in the white community right now, they should be mass incarcerated based off of the three strikes law. But see, notice they, they pick and choose what laws they want to enforce. See, white folks don't have, don't have to worry about three strikes. They can be on the books, they don't have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah, Oliver North and Reagan, oh yeah. And Iran, Contra, all that mess. You say you say you're blocking voting with a filibuster. Well, let me tell you something. Dr. King 
In that letter from the Birmingham jail, he talked about the white moderate and how the white moderate was was the, the, the biggest problem to black people. Because at least the white progressive, you know where they stand. The white conservative, you know where they stand. But that white moderate, you say, well, I'm just in the middle. They your problem. Dr. King said that a long time ago. So the Joe Mansions and the Christian Cinemas have, are actually more of an enemy to black people than your outright Richard Spencers and all of those. At least you know where they come from. Those white moderates actually is more of a threat to you. They're a threat. But the way the system is set up in America is not to make sure. Because see, think about it. In the House of Representatives, it's majority vote. Okay, cool. But the Senate, like I say, that's a rule. That's not a law. That's not in the Constitution as a law. That's a rule. And they put in those rules to stop black people from getting rights. They lie and say, oh, well, it's because if, if a new uh, of a new party comes in, they got majority rule, they can just change things. So, okay, so why don't you go put that rule in the, in the House of Representatives then? Why didn't you go put it there? You say China's weaponizing America. Oh, yeah, white America, yeah, yeah, yeah. China, China knew what it's doing. China has been waging war on America, and, and they haven't even showed up with a military. But anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, um, what I'm saying is the world is seeing how America is just unraveling. They see it. They see it. They see it. They see it. And, um, but it serves them right. Because if you don't do right by God's children, if you don't do right, then hey, you get you get what you deserve. Now this is what America is going to do in the end, I believe. Oh, they're going to want to give them black America reparations eventually. I, I believe they're going to want to give it to us. But by that time, it'll be too late. It'll be too late. Because you know, you know how they are. When they get in certain trouble, certain trouble, they start looking at us. You remember after um, 9/11, when they thought their world was coming to an end, they looking at us like, you know, oh, I can't believe what's happening. You, you scared? I'm scared, and this and that. And black like, scared of what? Well, so you seen some death today? Okay, we seen a lot of that in our neighborhoods. That's that's nothing new. Okay, you know, and it's like, well, oh my God, what's going on? You'll be all right. Calm down. I know how some of y'all remember that. These other groups come in this country, in America, get do all kinds of things in America. But you're always policing the black man. You're always, you know, policing the black woman. We ain't done nothing like that. And we're not going to do nothing like that. That's not who we are as a people. But you always, <laughs> if, you, if you take some resources and, 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 and use the resources to monitor these other groups, then you can get down to the people that's really trying to harm America. If you're so focused on mass incarcerating us. Or well, you're talking about the people, the foreign people that come to our country, they are selected by America to come in. I'm not saying all people that come in are bad. I'm not accusing all. But at this stage of the game, how I know how America selects people to come in, I won't be, I'm be. i like, hmm, why I let you in like that? Remember, even on a vacation, they have to be selected to come in. They're not like other countries where you can just go on their website Pay, fill in your information, put in your passport information, fill out your COVID form or whatever, pay your money, boom, you got your 90-day visa. Mm -mm. No, they select who comes in here. They select. And you're right, their embassies are the recruitment agencies. You're 100% right. It's at those uh, embassies in all different countries where they're screening who comes in. Some people, from what I was told, can get in like it ain't no problem. And the other people are never allowed to visit America. Never allowed. That's not fair for other people 
I mean, the other countries allowing us to go to their country with no problem, but, but they can't come to ours. That's not fair. That's wrong. You talk about Afghanistan, they also just sent $300 million of your tax dollars to Afghanistan recently, too, on an airplane. They just sent money, more, money, more of your tax dollars. They don't have money for black people, though. They ain't got that kind of money. I was just doing some research also on uh, Muammar Gaddafi and how he treated the people when he was in office, okay? And um, when I read when I read everything that Gaddafi done for the people, and I seen the people verifying everything that was being said, so yeah, I lived in Libya at that time. Yep, Gaddafi did every bit of that. And it was multiple people saying the same thing. I need to do a stream on Muammar Gaddafi. And uh, of course, I've always been angry about that. But the simple fact of if American citizens, for instance, do you know Gaddafi did not charge his citizens for, for, for lights? In other words, the citizens got free lights. Could you imagine getting your light bill being free? Could you imagine that? Your light bill being free? And he, and he said that the reason why the lights was free is because it, the power generation came from the resources of Libya. So the people should not be paying for no lights. People be so excited in America we had to, had free lights. And it was getting a check. It was getting a check once a month from the oil companies that in their country. Do you know Gaddafi, another thing, if you got married, like you're a married couple, do you know that they would give he would give you fifty thousand dollars? Fifty thousand U.S. dollars for for uh, to get for you getting married. If you have a child, he give you five thousand dollars. Now think about that. If the, if if America gave fifty thousand dollars for married couples, the one of the best things you could do with that money is get a home. Okay. Imagine that you you get married to your lady or you get married to your man. You start off with $50,000, enough to go to go big down payment on the home and, and go from there. Then if you have some babies, you're getting $5,000. That's a big help in itself. $5,000 for the baby? This, 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 was, this was what Gaddafi was doing. And they got to go to college for free. If they went to college abroad, he, he, he paid for that. But they had to come back to Libya and bring back those expertise, which is understandable. But it's, it's like 16 different things that Gaddafi did that I want to go through, but I'm not taking my time with it. But what got Gaddafi killed was not even the great thing he was doing. But when he tried to get the African continent on the central currency, that's, that's what got him killed. That's what got him knocked off. Yeah, now, that's, that is that is... What, how Libya is now, that is the fault of the West. And what I mean by the West, we mean all those Western powers, all those white countries, that they did that. It wasn't just Obama. Because it was NATO that did that. They didn't want Obama to sign off on it. And he kept talking about it, you think about it. He kept saying, man, I didn't, I didn't first, I was reluctant. He said, but Hillary kept asking me so much. He said, it seemed like Hillary was throwing rocks at my window. I don't even saw him talk about that. Basically, Hillary kept being on him, on him, on him, on him, on him by Gaddafi. And then that, that woman, didn't, you remember that video where she said, you know, we came, he said, we saw, and he died, and she laughed about that by Gaddafi? She laughed about it like, like it was a joke. That was, a, that was a joke to, to kill that man. That was funny. But she had that man's sons in, in, in America at the White House. Like, like I, I don't understand these people. I can sit up there and, 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 and meet you, meet your sons, and then be cool with going on and taking taking out the man I met and, 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 and possibly you know kill the, the man's son. Yeah, fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, man, Gaddafi was on that, bro. He was on that. Let me, I don't know if I can even get to. Let me see. Let me see. Hopefully, I'm still alive. 
if I get to this or not. Give me a second. Okay. Um, give me a second. Let me see here. So, Gaddafi had no interest loans on the bank. So, like, you got a loan from a bank. He had no interest loans. Um, medical treatment. Educa medical treatments didn't have to really pay for that. If you was a farm, if you was a farmer, then Gaddafi gave you farm land, right? So you can grow food for free. America don't give farmers anything for free. Your farmers are important, so your farmers can can grow, you know, your food, you know, cultivate your cattle. Like that's like farmers are very, very important for any country. And they don't give farmers land for free. They don't give them free seeds. They don't give them free equipment. So 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 they can produce food for, for the country. America has so much land in that country that's not habitable that they can give for free. Gaddafi was giving away free land. If you want to farm, here's your, here's your land. Go start farming. Yeah, white farm. Yeah, and that's even racist. Like, okay, if, if I'm the leader of America, right, it doesn't matter to me if you're a white farmer, a black farmer, a Hispanic farmer, an Asian farmer. I don't care about your color. All I care about is getting the food. But these people are so is so evil and ignorant that they care about the color of the farmer. So so what the black farmer, the, the whoever farmer, they can't they can't produce food either? Only one group of people can produce food? I mean, that, that's silly to me. That is silly to me. But this is how backwards the United States is. And once again, it goes back to what I said in the beginning. This is why other countries say America can't lead. Because look at how the leadership is in your own country. How are you going to lead somebody else's? When you care about farmers based on skin color instead of the skill. A farmer is a farmer. A doctor is a doctor, right? Why the color of a doctor matters? I'm just saying, in the in the, in the grand scheme of things, why does color even really supposed to matter? I thought we were looking for the best of the best, right? But all the time, white folks say that. Unless they're being cut out of something. Well, we should have the best doctor. Why it got to be a black doctor? Well, the reason why it got to be a black doctor is because you set up a system where you say only the white doctor is good. The black doctor is bad. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I, I'll talk more about uh, Gaddafi and everything another time. But with that being said, I said, you know, if you want to just join y'all, you know, thank y'all uh, for uh, joining me on this live stream and everything. It's, um, you know, it's kind of late. Well, a little late, at least for me, where I'm at right now. Um, I'm looking at this window here. Yeah, so you said we used to be so United American. Uh, I believe that you said the Western EU is collapsing. Oh yeah, it, it's, it's going to collapse. It, 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 it's, it's going to collapse. It is going to collapse. It got to. That's why I'm telling black people, my brothers and sisters who subscribe to me in, in the EU countries, okay? Um, man, hold your peace. Make sure to have your passport and start traveling to other countries, okay? You know, I'm, uh, you want, I mean, it's up to you what countries you want to look into. Do you. But uh, I know how I feel. I can't wait to this South Africa trip that's supposed to be coming up. I can't wait because I want to go see, you know, I want to see the real estate. I want to go see everything. Things, you know, that I always want to look into. You know, could it work well for me in South Africa? I'm still, I'm still trying to find what country will work out well for me and my family. Because even, even my mama, uh, my mama, she must be talking about me. She must be. Um, even my wife was saying that. Like, yeah, we need to, you know, uh, make sure you line up secure our spot somewhere because she, she talks about that all the time. Like, this place is falling apart. She says it more than I do. 
And I told her, I said, so, I think I asked her this, I think, yesterday or so. I asked my wife, and said, so, I said, yeah, it's really been on your mind, huh? She said, oh, yeah. She said, I'm telling you, this place is falling apart quick. She said, I, I just don't want to be in a situation, or we don't want to be in a situation where we don't have nowhere to go. We just stuck there. She said, no, uh-uh. I said, well, that's why I can't wait until the, the South Africa trip. Just so I can go see what's up. That's it. Um, oh, you say you got a documentary on Gaddafi? Okay, maybe I can check that out. What do you say is about to be another major conflict? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, hey, some of my brothers and sisters are in Panama, and that's fine. Well, I say, listen, do whatever you're going to do. I, I'm not telling you what to do. I just say, have your passport and start traveling. That's it. Start seeing the other side of the world. Start realizing that there's more to life than just where you come from. Realize that everybody's not as angry as you, not as stressed as you, not worried about the things that you're worried about. Okay? They just not. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, well, what if you go to a country where you're not using the word black all the time? What about that? So if you go to an African country, there's no such thing as calling saying black this, black this, uh, black empowerment, black. Well, the whole country's black. <laughs> and, and that's a beautiful thing, actually. I'm going to go to a black dentist. Okay, all the dentists are black. I'm going to go to a black doctor. All the doctors are black. What are you talking about? You know, that's the new problem you want to have. That you, that you want to be in a situation where everything's black. Everything's black. Well, you don't have to worry about saying black all the time. The word saying black all the time means something in America. It don't mean something, especially in the African continent. That means what? Black? Well, we all, are we all black here? You know. You say U.S. is losing world power and respect. Oh, yeah. Oh, they, no, they, they ain't losing it. They lost it. Nobody respects America like that no more. I'm telling you, don't. They don't. They actually have, at, at times, more respect with, from the Chinese. What would the Chinese say? Yeah, that's happening too. You know, um, like, for instance, America banned Huawei, right? Um, Huawei, and the thing is, oh, it's a national security risk. Well, Huawei ain't stopped selling anything. I'm looking at right now where I'm at. He got a big sign talking about Huawei watch 3G 3TG nice looking watches too actually these Huawei watches that I'm looking at from outside this window you know what I'm saying yeah 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 it's just it's just annoying and when you go to other countries anyway they call you an American they don't call you black some of y'all when y'all start filling out a visa paperwork y'all young when they say nationality or whatever you're not going to see some of that 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 race. You're going to just see nationality. You got to put American. That's your nationality. That that is your nationality. Now inflation is hit other countries too, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, like I said, I'm just uh, like I said, just 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 just, refle just reflecting, just reflecting. He said, but if you close your eyes on race and let everybody come in, he said that, that those other people can exploit your multicultural views to remain on top. Bruh, other countries not even thinking about that. Once again, they talk about nationality. They don't be talking about no freaking race. And does race even matter in an African country when everybody's black? And America has multi America is full of multiculturalism. It says, that's been and gone. Says, do you know when a black doctor in the medical school they send them to white hospitals in the poor white neighborhoods? It doesn't surprise me, none. It doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. Well, they say America's a melting pot, but it's really not. That that melting pot situation is, is a uh, is a farce because white people run that country. A true melting pot means every group of people run the country and they don't. They, they don't. White people in the country. 
Yeah, yeah. You say in real talk, they feel so good being an African when everyone is black. Yeah, you ain't got to worry about talking about I'm going to go to a black doc. Only thing you want to worry about at that point is I want a good doc. I want a good this. I want to go to a good business. That's what you want to worry about. Not why I'm looking for somebody black. Like, you know. And then, like I say, in America, that's important. That's very important in America, trust me. But once you get out of America and get into African countries, well, then it changes. <sighs> Well, for me, I look at who can, Rashad, I look at who controls things. You know, um, yeah, you had South Africa has has many different groups of people there. But I don't look at who's controlling it. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a melting pot of losing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there's that report saying that they just failed to block the filibuster. Of course, you, of course they're going to block it. Of course. They don't want you to have anything. Let's go, re go research what Dr. King said about the white moderate. Let's go look at it. And you come back and tell me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know, th thank you uh, for joining us. Like I said, I'm going on too long, but I have a certain time period. But uh, we'll catch you on the next one.